Okay, so we are going to look at practice problem number one for extended free body diagram uh, drawing. And this is the long problem again, so keep that problem set up for you to kind of refer back to. Cliff and Will are carrying a two meter board, uniform board, so the center of mass will be in the geometric center in the middle, of mass 71 kilograms. Will is supporting the board on his shoulder at one end of the board, and Cliff is 0.6 meters from the other end. They are both walking forward to carry the board. Cliff has attached his lunch to the end of the board at the very end, so the furthest point near to him. And the lunch is pulling straight down on the board with a force of 200 newtons. Will's cat is sitting directly in the middle of the board getting a ride. The cat weighs 40 newtons. Draw an extended free body diagram and all interactions on the board. We're going to only draw the forces and the radii. So we're going to talk about the interactions like we've been doing, but just draw the forces and the radii on the board. So, if I was going to analyze something, this would be like a torque analysis. So we really want to make sure that we are still identifying the object that we're going to draw that extended free body diagram of. And that, of course, is the board. And so if we imagine what's happening here, draw our picture, here's our board, we have, uh, I've already forgotten the gentleman's names, we have Will on one side of the board, he's standing here supporting the board on his shoulder, and we have Cliff sort of near the end, he's supporting the board, his lunch is kind of hanging off at the end, and the cat, yeah, not so great, the cat's sitting there somewhere in the middle. Alright, so here's our situation, we're interested in the board. We're going to talk about those interactions and develop the extended free body diagram in parallel. So what is interacting with the board? Well, we have the gravity, and that's between the board and the earth. We know that at that X, we're going to list these interactions first and then draw our free body diagram thinking about all of those interactions. Um, we have cliff, and that's between the board and cliff. We have will, and that's between the board and will. We have will's lunch, that's interacting with the board, between the board and the lunch. And we have the cat, and that's of course between the board and the cat. All right, so let's take those interactions and we'll draw our extended free body diagram. We need to be looking now in an extended free body diagram both at the force and where the force is acting. So we'll draw our board as a straight line. We've taken that dot and we've extended it to look at interactions at specific locations. So gravity, where does gravity act on an object, an extended object? Well, it acts at that object's center of mass. We're told that the board is uniformly distributed. So the center of mass is at the geometric center. So we're going to take right the middle of the board, the force of gravity acts straight down, and we know that's equal to the weight and mg. All right, Cliff. Cliff is at one end of the board. Let's say Cliff is at this end of the board. That's Cliff. So he is acting on the board. What direction is he acting? Well, the board is resting on his shoulder, pushing his shoulder down, so Cliff is pushing up on the board. So here is the force of Cliff acting up on the board. All right, Will. Well, Will's holding onto the board over here, and so past the center, it says that Will is 6.6 meters from the other end. So the board is 2 meters long. We'll just identify that for us. So the board is two meters. Will is six meters from this end, the opposite end of Cliff. So he's somewhere over on this side. And like Cliff, he's resting that board on his shoulder. The board's pushing down. So here is the force of Will. We also have the lunge, which we, are, we learned is hanging off the end of the board, the board by, I think I have my folks back. Uh, Will is supporting it as his shoulder. This is Will on the end. 
I have my gentleman on the wrong side. And this is Cliff. Because it's Cliff's lunch that's hanging off the end of the board. So here's the force of the lunch hanging down. And then we have Will's cat. And the cat's going to be closer to Will. But it says the cat is sitting directly in the middle of the board. So he's pushing down on the board right in the middle. So here is the force of the cat. I think those are all our forces. Every one of these forces, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, better show up on our extended free body diagram. So here are our forces. Now we have to identify the radii, both the forces and the radii. But that requires us to put a pivot point. Now when we do for torque analysis, the pivot point is going to be placed where it's going to be the best for us, the one that's going to make analysis the easiest. Since we're just drawing a free body diagram, we can identify the pivot point anywhere, but the problem asks you actually to identify it at this point. So there's our pivot point at the point Will is acting on the board right at the very end. So the radius of Will is zero. He's acting at the pivot point. Let's look at the radii of the rest of the objects, the rest of the forces. So, the force of the cat. Well, the cat is sitting right in the middle of the board. The board is two meters long, so the radius of the cat is from the pivot point to the force at one meter. The radius for the force of gravity is from the pivot point to the force at one meter. Those don't look like the same length, do they? Let's make those the same length since they're both one meter long. The radius for cliff is from the pivot point to the force. He's one point, he's sorry, 0.6 meters from the end. So this is the radius of cliff, which is going to equal 1.4 meters from the pivot point. Got to label the radius of the force of gravity. That's one meter, because it's halfway through. And the radius of the cat is also equal to one meter. And finally, the radius of the lunge from the pivot point to the force. So the radius of the lunge. That's at the end of the board, so it's two meters. So when we think about an extended free body diagram, we have the object extended in space. And we apply the forces just like we did with the free body diagram. All the forces in our list and our interactions show up on that free body diagram, but at the location that they're acting. We then identify a pivot point. It was given to us in this problem. Strategy in other problems will dictate where that pivot point, pivot point goes. And the radius is always from the pivot point to where the force is acting. So that's our extended free body diagram. Good job.